Hey everybody, if you watched my last video, I showed that a certain vendor had the Contemporary Controls Backnet Router on sale. <clears throat> well, you're, if you did not buy it, you're in luck. It, they still have it for the same price. If you go to kelly.com, you can still pick up this portable Backnet Router for $176.28. I'm not signed in. I did order this through them. I did get it for this price, so it's not a mistake. So as of the recording today, 12, 14, 24, you can get this uh, BACnet router for that same price. So I'm gonna show you how to set this guy up. Um, brand new in the box. I'm gonna unbox it here and show you the settings that I changed to make it work on my the devices that I hook it up to. I work with Johnson Controls, DizTech, Honeywell, pretty much everything out there. Uh, there are some tweaks that you got to do for different vendors and stuff on here, uh, but I'll go through that. But right now I'm going to set up for a DizTech controller. So unboxing here, you got um, information. You have an RJ45 cable, your Ethernet cable. You have a power cable, which is just a USB printer cable, right? And then the device itself. Now, on the device itself, don't lose this terminal block. If you lose this terminal block, you pretty much have to buy one of these new again. I haven't really found something that has the same terminal blocks as this. Uh, to save some time here, I already have BACnet wired to this one, so I'm going to plug in the BACnet there. I am going to plug in the power there. And I'm going to plug in the Ethernet here. Okay. Um, the other side of this wire is ran over here to my DizTech controller plugged into the magnet there. I'm going to plug in the Ethernet portion of this to my Ethernet adapter here. That way I can have multiple uh, Ethernets going on on this computer. And I'm going to plug in here. to the computer here. There we go. And I'm going to power up this USB with my computer right there. Okay. So now I got a power going and I'm in. Now, I need to configure my computer to be on the same ethernet subnet as this guy. So, let's do that. You just come over here to your internet settings, network and internet settings. Network and internet settings, you want to go to Ethernet. You want to go to change adapter options. And then you want to find which Ethernet port this is plugged into. This happens to be Ethernet 2, the TP link. So I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to go to properties. I'm going to go to Ethernet Protocol version 4 and double click on that. And I need to assign my computer an address the same subnet as this. Not the same address, but the same subnet as this. So let's see what that looks like 192.168.92. This address is 68, so I'm just going to go 111. And then submask is going to be 255.255.255.0. I don't have to put in a gateway. I'm not going to. So I'm going to hit OK. OK. And close. On some computers, it's going to ask you another OK somewhere in the back or whatever. But mine doesn't do that. So I can close all out of that. So now I'm on the same subnet as this. I'm going to open up uh, Internet Explorer. I use Chrome. And then I'm going to go to the address that's on here, 192.168.92.68. Okay. The default credentials for this is admin, admin. Okay. You have to put in another password other than admin on this one. I'm just going to go ahead and put uh, password. One, two, three. Okay. 
and S word one, two, three. Thanks. All right, it's going to reboot. You're going to put in your new password. Did it not take it? All right, you type in your password right, and you're in. Okay, so here's the changes that I make. Okay, uh, Ethernet network uh, one, I leave that the same, fixed. Okay, I leave the IP the same, it's fine with me. I We could change it. Now, I do change the MAC address. It comes in as a zero. Uh, certain vendors don't like zero. So you can go anywhere from uh, zero to basically 126. Okay, so I, I'm i going to go to 126 because I know I rarely use that number. Um, for Johnson, I could use one, two, three, right? Because Johnson doesn't allow you to start before four in CCT. So you're good there. But other vendors um, don't mind using one, two, three. I, I like to start with one, two, three on DizTech, stuff like that. So I, I usually go on a high range on mine. And then uh, network address 2001, that's fine for that. So, and then your baud rate, this is what you got to look at. Uh, 38 four is good for this tech and other stuff. If you're doing train systems or something like that, you're, you're going to want to run 76, eight. Okay. Honeywell 76, eight, uh, Johnson, this tech 38, four is fine. And then I hit the save changes here. And it should reboot. Make sure it did. Yes, we're good. So now we can get out of there. So now come over to our workbench and test it out. Let's see if the station's still running. Looks like it is. So check my client connection. Local device is one good network. IP port, I need to enable this. I'm not Wi-Fi, so I have to find the correct adapter here. It's going to be this TP link. Okay, and I hit enable. And hit save. 192.168.92.111. That's the address I gave myself. So if I go into here and hit a discovery, I should be able to see the controller. Now... The first discovery, it might not bring in the controller itself. It'll probably bring in the router. Let's see. I did not do a global. So I, since I didn't do a global, it just brought in the router. I don't need to bring in the router to the workbench. Uh, the next time I do this, I can just do send global. And let's see if it brings it in. Boom. There we go. Here's that. VAV, I can bring it in, rename it to whatever I need it to be. We don't need just dashes. Only in Johnson do you use dashes. And I brought this in. It's live. It's on my network. Status is okay. I can ping it. I can launch the wizard um, and program that. But that's how you set up the uh, BACnet router straight out of the box. Some of the settings that you need to change on there. Now, uh, for the password, go ahead and just just print out a password. Put it on there. If someone steals this guy, it's so easy to reset. There's a reset button right here. Uh, you, you put this in for three seconds and it changes back to admin, admin. So uh, if someone takes it, you leave it on a job or whatever, they can get into it, so you might as well save yourself the headache of getting into it. it just printing out the password, putting it on the back or the front or whatever. If you want to see how to make this wireless, uh, check my other video out. And we actually adapted this to a little bitty wireless adapter to make this uh, completely wireless. I used that the other day. It worked great all day long with the little battery pack that we had. Uh, but everything's good on that. 
Thanks for watching.